read-only domain controller. The read-only domain controller means that we do unidirectional replication. Notice it only comes from one domain controller into this read-only domain controller. And you can tell it's a read-only domain controller because we put the little RODC in there. Uh, the advantage here is, is that it's read-only, and that includes the DNS. So this is great. I can have a junior administrator give them permissions inside of this uh, read-only domain controller, but I don't have to worry about them going in and poisoning my Active Directory throughout my entire forest. So let me show you how you can pre-position a read-only domain controller. I'm going to go to this machine over here, and we will bring up our Active Directory users and computers. They would ask you, if you have a read-only domain controller, and somebody comes in and compromises your passwords, they steal the read-only domain controller, how do you reset those passwords? And in fact, and let me talk about this, one of the things about read-only domain controllers is, is you can have a password replication policy that specifies which user accounts can have their username and password replicated to the read-only domain controller. You can say, you know, there's certain usernames and passwords that we never want to replicate to this here read-only domain controller. But you can also say, here's those some that are. Now, if you have all this stuff replicating over here, and somebody steals that read-only domain controller, and they take it to their evil layer, and they're starting to run these hacker tools against it, you may want to reset the passwords. How do you do that? How do you know which ones are over there? Let me show you how. So what we're going to do is, is I'm just going to create a read-only domain controller. So I'll say new, eventually. There we go. New. Actually, I'm going to say pre-create a read-only domain controller. So we're off to see the wizard. And it says, ah, oh, if you're going to do this, you have more security that says allow for NTFS and SMB, and, and we don't care. So we're going to use my administrator credentials to allow them to uh, perform the installation, or we can pick another person's credentials. This is great because I can have a non-administrator go in and actually do the installation without having to give them the full uh, power and authority of administration account. So I'll say next, and we're going to ask the computer name. We're going to call it RDOC dash PHX dash zero one. I like putting uh, their place in there as well. So we'll say next. Verifies the computer name, verifies that nobody else has it. What site do you want to put it in? I'm going to put it in the Perth site. So I'll say next. Checks out my DNS, makes sure DNS is all nice and happy. And we'll give it a minute here. And again, what we're doing is we're pre-positioning it. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden we have a magic read-only domain controller show up. They're still going to have to install it, just like we did with DC Promo. But because they're joining an existing domain, they're going to be able to select that we want to be able to install a read-only domain controller, which will allow them to do that. Uh, just remember, read-only domain controllers do not, uh, they don't store everybody's account credentials. They'll still have information about everybody's user account, but they're not going to have the passwords unless I specify through my password replication policy that uh, we are going to allow them to have this particular user account be authenticated. So uh, we'll give this a second. And in fact, while this is uh, running, we'll give it a minute. We're going to go in and we're going to talk about BitLocker. After about, I don't know, 40 minutes <laughs> sitting there and, and uh, looking at our DNS structure, we now are ready to continue on with installing or prepositioning our read-only domain controller. And so it's going to say, well, what other services do you want on here? Now remember, you can make it a DNS server and a global catalog server. But again, this is one-way replication. One-way replication, period. So we'll say next. And then it says, well, who can actually install this? Um, we're going to allow them to attach the read-only domain controller. It says I can go ahead and do this. They do have to have local, or they will get a local administration on there. So I will say set, and we'll just grab, I'm just going to make it easy. You could actually specify a, uh, a name, but I'm just going to, or you would specify a particular group. I'm just going to say enterprise admins. Just, just keep it simple. Say OK. But you could have like, you know, the accounting managers or something like that. And here's our information. Are you sure you want to do this? I'll say yes. And now it is done. Now remember the purpose here is what if somebody comes in and steals my read-only domain controller? 
how do I reset the people who's authenticated and whose credentials are stored on there and also the computers? I only want to do those. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to right click on this read only domain controller and it says that it's an unoccupied domain controller right here so I know that nobody has actually joined the domain and I am going to go through and I'm going to hit delete and it says are you sure you want to delete this computer named RODC Phoenix 01 I'll say yes and then it goes off to this incredibly helpful wizard so if you need to go through and reset passwords and computer accounts just delete the read-only domain controller and it'll allow you to do that. So by default, it'll say reset all passwords that were cached on this read-only domain controller. And I can also reset all the passwords for computers. Now, if I do that, that means that they're going to need to be rejoined to the domain. So I'm not going to necessarily do that. And then I can export a list of accounts and I'll tell it what the, uh, the list is. But I, I would just make a little text file and it would list all of the uh, computer accounts or the user accounts that were reset in here. So it's really, really simple. All you do is you just go in and you say, all right, this is where we are going to uh, reset the account. It says, are you really, really sure? Now, you got to be careful because when you reset the passwords, what's going to happen is if they're using the encrypting file system and they don't have a password recovery disk, all of their encrypted files are going to be lost. So be very, very careful. Um, it's also going to delete all the metadata for the domain controller say OK. And it says, well, wait a minute, there's a global catalog server. Are you sure you want to do that? I'll say fine. And now it's gone. And then I would have my little text file that would tell me which user accounts had their passwords reset. And I may want to notify help desk and say, hey, you're going to get a bunch of calls from the people up in Perth because we had to reset their machine.